Laravel validation is super easy, but there's a few ways to do it. I'm going to walk you through a few different ways to validate a form and show you what options are available. Hello and welcome to Coding with Steph. This is actually the first video on my channel where I'll be uploading weekly Laravel tutorial videos, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any. Today we're looking at validation in Laravel, and Laravel actually makes this super easy, but there are a few different ways that you can go about validating forms and data coming into your application. So without further ado, let's get into the code. So to get started, I've installed Laravel 8, just a fresh installation, and added a couple of roots here, just at the root of the application pointing to a form controller. And we've got the index method, which displays the form, and we have a store method, which would, in a normal application, process the submitted data. And then we have a pretty simple HTML form that I've used Tailwind to style up just so that it looks nice. And here, as you can see, I've included some typical form fields that you would have. I've called it a register form for the purposes of this demo, but this could be any form on your website. Username, email address, creating a password, things like that. And currently we can put anything we like in this field. It doesn't matter, it doesn't check anything. It will just allow anything to be submitted and show you the thank you screen. So obviously we want to validate the data coming into this form. So how can we go about this? Well, Laravel actually gives us, as part of the request that is sent through, a validate method, which we can give an array of rules. And we construct this array by saying the name of the form field, so the first one in our form is username, and then the rules that we want to apply. So for example, the username we could say we want it to be required. And then we also have the email address. So the email address should also be required. But then we want to check that it is also a valid email address. So we can give it a pipe and then add another rule. In this case, email. So now let's give this a test. So in the browser, we don't enter anything, hit submit and it appears as though nothing's happened. Whereas in fact, Laravel has validated that form for us. Now obviously in this situation, we want to display errors on screen. So if we go into our template file, so what we could do in this case is if we head over to the Laravel documentation, you will find in the validation section, this snippet of code here. which we can stick at the top of our form. And I'll adjust the styling here because we're using Tailwind. So we can say text red uh, 600 and give us some margin at the bottom. Okay, so let's submit this form again. Brilliant, exactly what we wanted. So now we can see that the validation is working. Great, let's validate the password. So all we have to do is add a password Key here we say that's required and we also want the password confirm field we want that to match we want it to be the same as the password field super easy right you're saying we want it to be the same as what's been entered into the password field let's give this a go so I can say password is test and password is test 5 Great, there we go, the password confirm and password must match. So as you can see, validation in, in Laravel, super easy. And if you head over to the Laravel documentation, there's a whole host of different validation rules that you can use. Everything from, uh, is it after a specific date? Um, does it end with, is it greater than? Requiring a field to be a Boolean? There's a whole host of validation rules, so do go over and check it out. I'll leave a link in the description below directly to this list. So we've got our form, we've got it validating data, but it's not perfect. For example, the password confirm and password must match. It's not a very clear error message. And do you think it would be better if each of these were next to their individual fields? Well, let's have a look at that next. So let's set a custom error message for the password confirm. What we can do is we can pass a second array to our validate method 
which sets our custom messages. So we can say password confirm. And then we need to tell it which rule we're setting a message for. So we'd use a dot and same. And then we set a message. So we can say, please ensure your passwords match. Let's try this again. So enter something in there, something that doesn't match. Please ensure your passwords match. Great. Now let's split these error messages up in the form. So instead of doing this, Blade actually gives us an error directive. So we can say error username and then end error. And then inside this, we have access to a message variable. So we could add a paragraph, uh, give it some styling, text red 600. Uh, make the text small, and then we just say message. And now we can apply that to the email field. Password confirm. And let's put the password one here too. So then at the top here, we can change this to just say there was an error submitting your form. All right, let's give this a go. So if we put some bogus information in, and there you go. You could style this up better however you want to fit. But in my opinion, that's a much better way of displaying error messages. Let's do one more tweak. Using this error directive, let's put another one as part of the class and say border red 600. And apply this to each of the inputs. this. Sweet. Now it's much clearer which fields have an error. We could add more error messages. So we could say username required. Please create a username. You could keep adding these, say email, email, your email address must be valid, etc, etc. You can see the error messages are reflected. But what if somebody enters information into the form, say I want my username to be Steph, and I say Steph at test.com. I create a password but I get the confirmation wrong. Now it's validated the form, but I've lost my information. As usual, Laravel's got you covered on this. There's another blade directive which you can use in this situation. So if we give this a value, we can say old username. Let's go old email. Let's not do it for the password. So let's give this another try. Username Steph, Steph at test.com. Password different. And there we go. The information we entered before is reflected back in the form, nice and usable. So now this form is working how we want, but 
this is a little bit cumbersome. You can imagine if we've got a lot of fields in here, this is going to get real long, and we've not even processed the submission yet in our code. So we end up having all this validation code in our controller, and it just starts to get a bit messy. So let's do this in a different way by using what's called a form request. And we can generate one of these using artisan. So we can say php artisan make request. And we can call this register request. So now if we open that up, register request, this class is now responsible for our validation. And as you can see in the boilerplate, we have a rules method here where we can place our validation rules. There's also an authorized method where you can put any authorization code if you need to, but we'll leave that for now. But in our case, we can just transfer our validation rules array to be returned by this method. And form requests can also handle your custom messages. And to do that, we will need a messages method, messages, and that simply returns what we had previously in our controller. So now we can remove all of this code from our controller. So our controller can just concentrate on processing the actual submission. And to use our, our new form request, we would type into it on the request. So we can say register request. And as you can see, that is included at the top here. And that should be that. Let's give our form another try. Ah, the eagle eye view will probably have noticed. Yeah. The authorized method, if we don't want to use it, we can simply set that to true. So let's try again. And there we go. Our form request has done the validation for us. Our front end stays exactly the same. And our controller is super clean. Much, much better in my opinion. And there we have it. We have a fully validated form, nice clean code using a form request custom error messages, super, super clean, and super, super easy. As I mentioned at the start, this is my first video on my channel. So if you have found this useful, or you have any feedback whatsoever, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my future videos. Take care, and see you next time.